Welcome into A to Z Sports Prime Time on this Wednesday night. It is fantastic to have you guys here for another episode of the Prime Time Program. We always love when you spend a little bit of your time with us, and it's the last Prime Time Show of the week. In fact, it's the last time uh, Prime Time Show for a little while because I'm getting ready to head down to South Beach on Friday, and uh, we are going to take a little bit of a vacation, but that's okay. We've got some Titans things to talk about because the head coach, the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, they all spoke today, and we are going to tell you what they, what kind of tone the new coaching staff for the Titans set and why it's a win from day one. We always appreciate when you guys get involved, and we love you even more. I love you anyway, but I love you even more when you share the show around. On Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, wherever it is that you are live streaming us this evening, like Angela, excuse me, Angelica James on Facebook Live. We've got Omar. I see Titans Kyle on YouTube, who's very impatient about what time I'm here. I'm here. Don't worry. The show doesn't start until I'm here. You're not, uh, I'm not late. You're just early. That's how this thing goes. Share this broadcast around wherever you are spending your time with us. Retweet it on Twitter, bottom right. Facebook Live, you can share, share, not a public. That's in the bottom left. Make sure you like the video while you're there. And YouTube and Twitch, do the same. Like that video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I think that's all the things that I need to tell you. So let's go ahead and get it started. Welcome into A to Z Sports. Prime time from the Zen Sports Studios. I'm your host, Buck Rising. I, if you're new to the show, I'm proud as always to be presented to you by the great people at Zen Sports. Download the app, plug in the promo code ATOZTN, get up to $1,000 on that no danger first wager at zensports.com. Two Rivers Ford, the South's most trusted Ford dealership, where you get quality American made Ford vehicles and award winning customer service. True Map Fitness in the Gulch, a new way to work out for the best version of you. Sign up for a weekend class if you are so inclined to get a full body workout. At True Math Fitness, your first workout is free as a Middle Tennessee resident. Good to hear from the Titans coaching staff. Off-season program officially underway. They had the guys in the building doing workouts. There are not full-on practices. They don't have helmets or shoulder pads on. They have very, very limited time that they can spend physically on a practice field doing anything at this particular point in time. The meeting times are restricted. It's a very, very kind of introductory football phase, football 101, especially when you open your offseason program on April the 8th, the way that the Titans and several other teams who made head coaching change changes get to do. Now, the benefit of this is you get the guys in early, you get to know the new coaching staff, the players get additional time around one, one another. That's important because not just for Will Levis and continuing to build relationships and chemistry with his offensive teammates or things like that, or Legereus Sneed getting to know his new secondary uh, comrades or whatever the case may be. But you have a lot of new faces in new places and a whole new coaching staff who's after going to, who's going to have to put together not a whole new off season program, but they're going to have to try and bring what they know from various places whether that's from Bill Callahan's previous experience as a head coach, both in college football and in the NFL, Brian Callahan's experience, what he learned from Zach Taylor in Cincinnati, uh, perhaps what he learned from John Gruden in Oakland. There are all manner of different things that have to be implemented, and it's a good time to have. It's a good time to have additional time because you have a lot of trial and error stuff that you got to work out. And speaking to, now obviously I wasn't at the press conferences today. We were doing the radio show live from Hattie B's, but we did carry the press conference live. And I've since gone back and watched both of the coordinators' media availability. Uh, players did not speak, nor are the workouts, because it's just workouts, uh, conditioning, strength training, things like that at this point. That's not open to the media, so we're not seeing these guys physically uh, work out either. Just getting a little bit of the down low from the coaching staff, the three powers that be in particular about what this offseason program will hold and how far along they are and how much they're enjoying their new pieces and parts and all manner of stuff in between. So the question that I would ask you is, what was your biggest takeaway from the Titans press conferences today from Brian Callahan, the head coach, from Nick Holtz, the offensive coordinator, from Denard Wilson, who many of you seem to enjoy? already without uh, having seen a single snap of what his product will look like on the field 
Seems like his press conferences have been well received to date. Uh, Kevo says, finally, well, actually, I got to remind you that your Two Rivers Ford take, and it's presented by Two Rivers Ford. The South's most trusted Ford dealership is Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet. Quality American made Ford vehicles, award winning customer service, and all their new non specialty Ford vehicles sold below MSRP. That's the Two Rivers Ford promise. That's what they give you. They go above and beyond to make the car buying process fast, easy, and fun. Their sales experts are non commissioned, which means you are under no pressure to go through the car buying experience because they're going to make a paycheck whether they sell you a car that day or not. Two Rivers Ford is the best in the business. They've been the best in the business here in Middle Tennessee for 40 years. Two Rivers Ford in Mount Juliet or online at tworiversford.com for more information. So what is your biggest takeaway from Callahan, from Holtz, from Wilson? It could be all three. You could have observations from each one. How do you feel at this point about what your coaching staff had to say? Kevo says, finally, a staff that doesn't mind pulling the curtains back for the fans. I laughed when I saw a comment of the Brian Callahan press conference while we were running it on the live stream of the radio show today. And I can't remember what the commenter's name was, but he said something, he or she, I can't remember, um, said something to the effect of, it's so nice to see a head coach who doesn't immediately approach the podium like he wants to punch somebody in the face. And while I personally, you guys seem to care more about Mike Vrabel's press conference demeanor than anybody in the press corps did. Like I know some people had some bad experiences with him and we all got got at various points. But honestly, I, I personally enjoyed that because it made you pay closer attention to what they're saying. It made you um, kind of stay on your toes as far as how you were asking the question. But even after trying to account for those kind of things, I will acknowledge that, you know, Mike wasn't willing to share hardly anything. And that's okay when you're winning. That's famously the Bill Belichick style. But that starts to wear on people when you have the smartest person in the room who probably is who is the smartest football person in the room. There's no disputing that that's the case, whether it's Mike Vrabel, whether that's Brian Callahan. Both of those individuals have forgotten more football than any of us will know in our lifetimes. That's that's what they do, right? That's their entire lives, in particular those two, because those two are football lifers from various, you know, from varying degrees, but still. But when Mike Vrabel's the smartest football person in the room and very much carrying himself like he's the smartest person in the room and you're 6 and 11, it's hard to do. It's hard to pull off and it's hard to kind of maintain that when the product continues to suffer and you get up there and huff and puff and snort and growl and uh, you know, say we're on to, on to Cincinnati next week. And I know that's more Belichick than it was Vrabel. And Vrabel had moments where he would expand, and they were good moments. But the, the difference in Brian Callahan and Mike Vrabel, most obviously so far, other than their philosophical approach, offense versus defense, whatever the case may be, what you have in Mike Vrabel is somebody who doesn't care about educating the fan base, or educating the media that cover his football team about football. That's not something that his job, that is within his job parameters, or in his job description, right? Why does he want to take additional time to teach you football when he has to get ready or focus on getting his team ready on Sunday? That's the approach, and that's fine. Unless you're not doing well, and then it ceases to be fine, and you need to expand a little more, and you don't and fans deserve a little more explanation about why it is their product looks the way it is. Even if you're not publicly taking out players, and I've never faulted a coach for not being willing to do that, Brian Callahan is sharing stuff that's just, it's not its not high-level state secret type stuff. And not we weren't even asking Mike that often for high-level state secret type of stuff, right? But they just make it so much more comfortable. And there was a good example that uh, it was either Mickey Ryan or Blaine Bishop brought up today during my hit with them on their radio show. I'm usually on with them every Thursday. But uh, today we made, a, or this week we made a, an adjustment for my schedule. One of them brought up the idea 
that we went weeks, weeks of Traylon Burke's first training camp trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with Traylon Burks and why is he miss- missing so much time and why won't anybody tell us what's going on? And okay, I understand you don't want to disclose injuries, but at a certain point, you're causing more stir because of how unwilling you are to share even the smallest detail about the situation other than the generalized Traylon isn't available, wasn't uh, wasn't able to finish practice today. Uh, We'll talk about the players who were able to complete practice today or things like that. And when Rob Moore, the wide receiver coach, just says in passing, yeah, you know, he's working through some stuff with his asthma right now, this, that, and the other, and it's some kind of huge revelation, and I am 100% certain that Rob Moore got his ass chewed out for disclosing that Traylon Burks was dealing with asthma asthma at the time. It's just, it's so over the top about even the smallest things like that that cause so much more consternation than need be. It's okay to tell us that Traylon Burks has asthma. That doesn't, you know, I mean, if Traylon Burks is comfortable, and if you make Traylon Burks, who's 22 years old and doesn't know any better, he's not going to, if Mike Vrabel says, hey, Traylon, keep the uh, the asthma stuff on the low. There's no need to tell the media about anything that's going on. Nobody cares to work harder. That's all well and good. Traylon Burks isn't going to then turn around and say, yeah, well, that's not a big deal, coach. I just want to tell them that I have asthma so I can stop fielding questions about, you know, whether I'm just, whether I'm dealing with a weight issue or not, right? There was a huge narrative around Traylon Burks. If he was not, if he was physically out of shape to the point where it was a weight situation, that was part of the speculation because we had nothing else to go on, go off of. And I'm not justifying the speculation, but you just leave more to the void instead of just, killing it out of the gate and saying, yeah, he's dealing with asthma. He's working his way through it. We have a, we have a plan for this. It's not insurmountable. There's plenty of NFL players who have and uh, continue to play with asthma uh, conditions. That's not uncommon at all. And it just turned into a whole different kind of mess. Brian Callahan is very, very much not that. He's going to probably overshare to an extent, but not even oversharing anything that would put his team, that would cost his team in terms of competitive advantage, I don't know how he's going to handle the injury situation. We'll see. Mike Malarkey used to give us time lot, basically time frames like six to six to eight weeks, or you know, ten to twelve weeks, or something like that. Got a dealing with an Achilles, dealing with a shoulder sprain, whatever, an AC joint, whatever the case was. Malarkey was far more forthcoming with that than was Brian Callahan, and we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But just generally trying to understand how they're how they're doing their jobs has been a big difference. It's been a huge takeaway for me in particular, hearing Brian Callahan talk and just understanding that when the head coach isn't as tight gripped on things, and we'll see how much, you know, Brian Callahan grows and evolves into this. Um, Vrabel ended up being far more relaxed at the end of his tenure than he was at the beginning of his tenure. Oh my God, I remember Mike Vrabel's uh, first press conference, first real press conference with us. Um, not his introductory press conference, but the first one at the start of his tenure uh, where he was just on 10 right out of the gate. And it was a very, very tight, hot, borderline hostile situation. And we're all looking around at each other like, oh my God, this is going to be a different kind of experience, certainly. And you adjust and you, everybody's got this different personality types. But It can create a tightness from the top down, right? When your head coach is that kind of, we say nothing, we tell them nothing, we hate them, they're our enemies, whatever the case may be. It doesn't benefit football players to talk more to the media than less, of course, but you just don't have to make everybody live with a certain kind of fear of what may happen if they make the tiniest mistake, which is to tell the media, yeah, he's dealing with asthma right now and he's just kind of, you know, he's trying to improve upon the situation or work through it. It, it just, it doesn't end up being that deep. And I think that, uh, I think that we'll, we'll see what happens with Brian Callahan, but you get the sense that they're just going to be a little more relaxed about things. Uh, I think he has a decent season, says Billy Jones. I have no idea what, that's the, that's the other thing. He could be as forthcoming and as um, knowledgeable and as willing to share as anybody in the world. And he could suck. As a head coach, I have no idea what Brian Callahan's going to be, but so far, like it's this is what we have to go off of. And winning press conferences does not win football games. But I'm just trying to learn. I'm just trying to learn more about this. I think fans are just trying to learn more 
about this. I don't think anybody's trying to outright undermine them with their own information at this point. There's no sleeper cells in the Titans media core or, or people that are going to, you know, uh, I, I, whatever the case may be, d- disclose information to the Jags organization or something like that. Like, it's just not, it just doesn't have to be so North Korea-like. And that that is what, uh, that is what, <laughs> it, it, it does, it's not quite that extreme like, like New England was, but there was definitely a tightness to Mike around a lot of that stuff that def- permeate, permeated a lot of, uh, a lot of this. Uh, Stephen King says, uh, PK's the sleeper cell. <laughs> it's not very nice. Um, you know, says, I just want to know more about that flag football league D hop endorsed for Nashville. Well, I think it has something to do with the women's uh, flag football uh, that just became a state-sanctioned TWSAA sport, a varsity sport, as a matter of fact. I'm sure he has more um, work to do about expanding the flag football footprint uh, here in Nashville, but that's uh, that's definitely something that we'll keep an eye on, and I know he's passionate about it. so passionate that he flew to owners' meetings um, to speak on it at the league meetings as well. So a couple of things from Brian Callahan, Denard Wilson, and Nick Holtz today. Uh, In particular, I really enjoyed hearing the three of them kind of set the tone and uh, disclose more about, for example, how they might approach the slot position. I think they're always open um, to adding those those spots. I mean, we we have to have someone emerge for us um, at at the slot position receiver when we're in 11 personnel. That's one that um, we got some some young players I'm excited to take a look at uh, with obviously Cal Phillips. Uh, Mason kinsey has been around here a little bit. He's shown his, his medal, obviously. Uh, Nick Westbrook, he has been involved in some of those spots over his career. So um, trying to find someone to merge in that spot, um, you know, you've got guys that you're trying to always build youth and depth as well. And so those things are uh, in constant flux. You're always trying to have another guy ready to roll. Um, you need depth at every position. That's not just the, just the receivers, but um, you're always open to those guys. And again, guys that are fast, explosive, and physical, um, you can't have enough of them. So that's Brian Callahan speaking today about how they're evaluating the slot receiver position in the new Titans offense. A to Z Sports Prime Time is made possible by the wonderful people at True Math Fitness in the Gulch. The best way to work out for a new way to work out and a new version of you, the best version of you. TrueMathFitness.com is where you go for your first workout free. Every workout, no workout is ever recycled or repeated. They're going to design it for that specific day, for that specific area of your body that they're trying to work out if the group fitness classes are what you choose to do and their personal training is exceptional. I am somebody who goes for personal training once a week with Worth, our guy at TrueMathFitness.com. Make sure that you tell them that A to Z Sports sent you and get your first workout free as a Middle Tennessee resident at TrueMathFitness.com. So, Titans have a ton of positions that they have to address, a lot of competition that's going to play out on the roster. Really, the only definitive positions that we know are the three starting corners, Jeff, Harold Landry, Amani Hooker on the defense. So six out of the 11 spots are penciled in. You might consider Kenneth Murray in that discussion, though I think that might be a little premature. So let's just say six 100% verified starters on the defensive side of the ball. Now, the offense, they've done well to fill out everything around the offensive line. The biggest question remaining and the most slots remaining to fill is on the offensive line, where you have your two starting outside wide receivers in Hopkins and Ridley. You have Chig as your starting tight end, though they certainly could use more tight ends heading into training camp. Um, They only have three under contract right now. For the start of training camp, obviously they will require more bodies than that. It's not specific to you know drafting Brock Bowers or signing a free agent, but they'll have to add additional bodies at that position to see how that plays out. Wiley shouldn't be considered a lock until such time as he is locked into the roster. He's going to have to earn that spot. Um, and I think that that tight end two discussion is very much up for grabs. We'll see how much progress that Josh Wiley has made. We know that Lloyd Cushenberry and uh, and uh, Peter Skaronsky are the two locked-in starters on the offensive line, and obviously Will Levis at quarterback. Between Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard, it just depends on who's out there for the particular start of the game to be considered a starter, and then there will be no fullback in the Titans' offense, one would imagine. Uh, they certainly did not carry one on the roster 
the way that Brian Callahan led those offenses in Cincinnati, though we'll see um, because this is a definitely different personnel group than they've had. Brandon says, Buck, I think in a way they finally addressed the tight end situation. They're staying with Chig and Josh, and they're not looking to do much more with the position besides adding depth. Um, I mean, I guess you could, I just think that's a projection, Brandon. I don't, I don't, I didn't take anything definitive away from Brian Callahan's statements on the tight end position. I'm looking for the specific quote right now. He's, he's, he is definitely a talker. He spoke at great length about a great many things, and I do appreciate his candor for that. But when you're trying to find quotes in a, in an emailed transcript, it doesn't necessarily uh, help you. Okay, on how he feels about where the team is with tight ends, I'll read directly from the transcript. We need tight ends. We do. We've only got three on the roster. So I'll, I'll start right there and, and say that, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't say anything definitively about staying with Chig and Josh, but he goes on. So that's a position of need just in terms of the numbers. He does say, feel really good about Josh Wiley and his development. Feel really good about Chig where he's at. We've got two young players we're excited about, but you know, obviously three tight ends isn't what you're going to take into training camp. So there's going to be some spots to add, whether that comes from a veteran player after the draft, whether it comes from a draft pick at tight end remains to be seen, but certainly we need to add more than we currently have. We'll probably take at least five, probably six tight ends into training camp. Generally speaking, that's usually where you're at. So there'll be some guys added to that room at some point. I don't think that says anything definitively about Chig or Wiley. Um, I, Brandon, you may feel defi- you may feel stronger about Chig and Wiley, and that might be a slight projection. Um based on your feelings about those two players. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Because he he brings up in a in a later comment, I do think that it answers the Brock Bowers question, though. I don't think that it, based on what? I again I, I'm genuinely curious because that's not that's not my takeaway. What he says about the tight end, there's going to be some spots to add, whether that comes from a veteran player after the draft, whether it comes from a draft pick at tight end remains to be seen. He's completely leaving the door open. Um, for an addition at tight end. I That doesn't mean that Chig and Wiley are in the doghouse. It just means that they're probably going to add a position. Bowers was always a more of a long shot here. Doesn't mean that it can't happen. We'll see what happens on the Thursday night of the NFL draft. We're just a little more than two weeks away from when this thing will actually go down. But I, I, I would push back on the idea that he said anything definitive about the tight end, about Chig, or Wiley today, other than that they need more bodies at the position and that three is not enough for them at training camp at this point. you People people will take those answers and make them what they want to make them, I think. And, and I think that's okay. Hopefully we can imp- provide you some important context. I don't think it guarantees that they're drafting a tight end at all, right? It just it leaves the door open enough to where I don't think that anybody could extrapolate anything definitive from that statement beyond we need more players in the position. Uh, Bryce Erickson says, you mean Jeff Swain wasn't cutting it? Hey, you know what? Swain gets a bad rap. Honestly, Swain gets a bad rap. Uh, he, he, he should have never, <laughs> he should have never been put in that position. I blame, I blame Todd Downing more for that. I blame uh, Mike Vrabel more for that. It should have been Chig from the jump. Okay. I know rookie tight ends don't always succeed right out of the gate. And I do take them at their word that uh, Swain was a better blocker than Chig. At the time, I simply don't care. I just, I justice for Jeff Swaim. Jeff Swaim deserved better. He was the ire, uh, the source of a lot of ire of Titans fans. And I think that the coaching staff, uh, you know, you pick your spots, but I think that the coaching staff deserves way more blame for Jeff Swaim uh, and his snap count than does Jeff Swaim himself. He doesn't, he doesn't put himself uh, in the game. Uh, somebody has to physically deploy the Swain package. And there was far too much of the Swain package. And I don't blame Jeff Swain for that. Uh, let's move on and let's talk about uh, Denard Wilson. Uh, some interesting comments from Denard Wilson uh, earlier today at the press conference. We will talk about them here together and which player will benefit the most from the defensive coaching change. Let's get into it. So pick a player on the defensive side of the ball that you think will benefit most from Denard Wilson, from his coaching staff that he's built out be, uh, below him and around him. Let me know in the comment section while I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by Zen Sports. There is no better place to get in on all the action than Zen Sportsbook. You know this on all your favorite major sports. 
basketball. Baseball is back. Hockey is getting ready to head into the postseason. We have the play-in tournament right around the corner, and Zen Sports offers you all kinds of action. The odds on all parlays, boosted same-game parlays for all Tennessee sports teams. That means boosted up to 20% over other books in Tennessee. They also have the one-of-a-kind VIP program, so if you qualify, you'll earn monthly comps at sporting events, concerts, you name it, even sportsbook bonuses. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line 1-800-889-9789. Terms and conditions do apply. No danger wager limited to plus 500 odds to qualify. Boosted odds are derived from equivalent parlay bets offered in Tennessee. Must be 21 plus and in Tennessee to bet at Zen Sports. Which defensive player stands to benefit most from the coaching change? Uh, Poipol Noipol. <laughs> Uh, Bert, I know you're laughing as hard at that as I am. <laughs> I could not. I, <laughs> I could have not said that better to fall into the exact trap that old Poiple is trying to set up. That was mwah, chef's kiss. He says, Murray, nowhere to go but up talking about Kenneth Murray. Damn it. <laughs> Jay Thomas has finally broke me. Yeah, they, you know, it's honest, honest to God, we have had the primetime show going. Guys, it's coming up on, uh, oh, my A to Z, my A to Z anniversary is coming up, as a matter of fact. It's uh, going to be, oh my God, is it going to be six years that I've been an employee at A to Z Sports? That's wild. To me, uh, I think, no, maybe five. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, six. Six years I will have been an employee of A to Z Sports uh, here in the next, like, four or five days, I think. And that's never happened to me. We've never had the Barry McCockiner thing. We've never had uh, any kind of any kind of name get me as bad as old Poiple Noiple. Just... <laughs> I lost. I lost today. It's the first L that I've taken that way in six, almost six years. But it's uh, it's a good one. Well done. <laughs> Did break me. Ocho says brought back some memory for Buck. It yeah, I, honestly, we'll we'll reminisce on a later date. We don't we don't want to waste your time, your guys' time, um, with uh, with talking about a uh, prematurely talking about an A to Z anniversary. But it is it it really is cool. Um. I uh, just aside before we get back uh, back into the Titans talk, I really am so proud of uh, Austin and Zach and everything that they've built. Um, I I can't tell you how cool it has been for me to be their first time or their first full time employee and see the way that they've grown this thing into a legit. I mean, this is a legit news organization around here. They've got writers in every NFL market. They've got people covering multiple teams. They've got a version of me in Dallas and Philadelphia. Uh, at this point, they uh, they have really kicked ass and taken names on the A to Z Sports Conquest, um, and so I, uh, you know, i i do get a I do get a little uh, I do get a little nostalgic about it. It makes me very happy to see this thing, this company succeeding the way that I know Austin and Zach envisioned it was going to, uh, and to have been some small part of it has been really really cool. Anyway, so. Let's keep it going. What did we learn from Denard Wilson? Which defensive player stands to benefit the most from his presence? Really enjoyed listening to him today. I know Titans fans will continue to enjoy listening to him, but specifically listening to him talk about the safety position stood out to me. Oh, you know, and make this a balanced football team. Except that's not Denard Wilson. That's Rand Carthon. These things are that is an old clip that I did not uh, that I did not look closely enough at. This is Denard Wilson talking about how confident he is in his defense. And for some reason, uh, the reason that I was confused by it is because Bert has put two pictures of me in the graphic, and I'm very upset with him. Now here is my shame. Oh, guys, and worry about that later. Well, really, you know, I don't focus on what other teams have. To me, their name is faces. Right, we're gonna play a certain style. We're gonna play with confidence. So it doesn't matter who they have on the team. It's eleven versus eleven, and it's in terms of the defense, it's eleven against one. It's eleven versus the ball. So you can get a whole lot of receivers, a whole lot of weapons, but it's only one ball, and it's our job to surround the football and take it away. 
explain yourself right now. I didn't. I couldn't even pay attention to it. The audience could not pay attention to what Denard Wilson had to say because your dumbass couldn't help but put two pictures of me in that turtleneck on the graphic next to Denard Wilson. Explain yourself for the audience right now. Right now. Put yourself on camera or I'll do it for you. I have the ability to pull you out of the darkness just as I have the ability to send you back. Do the right thing. For this secondary. See the smile on my face? Yeah. Yeah. I put a, a big smile on my face. Obviously, you know, during that transition period, you know, um, doing free agency, when you get a good player like him, you know, you, you always want to be happy. He's a guy that's been consistent throughout his career with the opportunities that he's presented. Um, he's had success. And when you are consistent, you have success, you bring extreme value to a football team. Uh, Cheeto as well. You know, the way Cheeto plays the game of football, how tough he is, the athleticism, his ability to do multiple things, it allows you as a defense to, to line up and cover guys, you know, because this is a passing league these days. And the, the wide receiver talent is, is getting uh, vastly uh, good you know, um, at a great speed. So for us to go up there and have guys that can compete, that aren't scared of the competition, that's going to line up and challenge guys as a defense, it makes you it makes you a better defense. We, we free. You make me so damn angry, Robert. You have you have people thinking that I went to the clip of the other black guy because I was confused as to why there were pictures of me <laughs> no, on the video. You no, see what you did to me? No, you made me a racist. No, Are you no. happy with yourself? You, you can't be racist. You've You're Egyptian. That's that's not how that works. I unfortunately I have some very racist Egyptian family members that I'm very very regret, re regretful about, but that's neither here nor there. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pull a uh, poipo noipo. Get out. <laughs> Unbelievable. So that's Denard Wilson talking about the defense, the confidence that he expects them to play with, the aggressiveness, and also uh, focusing in on Legereus Sneed and how happy he is to have his presence there. I think that the, uh, I think that the players... There's probably a couple of players who could stand to benefit from Denard Wilson's presence. And, um, you know, I think if you're a Titans fan, you hope that everybody benefits from Denard Wilson's presence. But Roger McCreary in particular, with the way they've built out the secondary, with the corner help that he now has, with the ability to now, provided that they stay as healthy as humanly possible, for him to primarily play the position that he's best at, which is nickel, as opposed to the outside in the NFL, can really, really set him up for success heading into his third professional season which is crazy to think about that Burks and Chig and NPF and uh and Roger McCreary are already heading, heading into their third NFL season think about that Chris uh not Christian Fulton um Elijah Molden for example is already in a contract year and I feel like people just people treat that draft class like it just got here and basically all of them are already gone from 2021 and from 2020 and 2022 is uh trying to figure out where their role is moving forward. 2023 feels pretty solid at this point. But uh, I think the, the player that comes to mind for me is Roger McCreary. Burt brought up in our pre-show call Harold Landry. Harold was out there kicking ass at the end of the season and doing it with not a lot of help, doing it with not great coverage uh, support. They've definitely upgraded the backfield or the secondary behind him. They need to get them more help between him and Jeff right now. Sebastian Joseph Day is a solid piece. I don't think of him as anything but like an average replacement level starter, and that's fine. That's better than you had uh, before uh, you signed him, so that's absolutely essential. But that's a group that needs more bodies, more depth. Um, Harold Landry, with the benefit of like legit coverage, legit secondary help, I, I agree with Bert that, that could go uh, a long, a long way, especially in a league where the ball is coming out so quickly. If you have the ability to dis disrupt the corner's timing, or rather the quarterback's timing, because you press the wide receiver right off the line and immediately get the quarterback out of rhythm, as opposed to the time that it takes for the defensive tackle to get to the quarterback or get his hands up in the air or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's, it's again, we say this. We'll see what the product looks like. They're checking all the right boxes. And they should put these players in, in better position to succeed this year. Uh, all right. Rising and falling. Let's wrap up the primetime show for the evening. Let's wrap up the primetime week, uh, if we could. Whose stock rose? Whose stock fell this week in sports? 
We'll talk about it together right after I remind you that the primetime program is made possible by the Intel Edge, by the Ashton Real Estate Group of Remax Advantage, where you don't sell without the Intel, where you need the Intel that only the Ashton team can provide to get your dream address without the stress. Nobody works harder for the middle, middle Tennessee home buyer or seller than the Ashton team. So go to GaryAshton.com for the official real estate agent of the Nashville Predators, who are playoff bound yet again. Congratulations to the Preds. Got a point last night against Winnipeg uh, because of the overtime. They didn't win in the overtime. They lost very quickly in the overtime, but still made the playoffs after missing it last year. Very cool. Bryce Erickson says, UConn and Dan Hurley stock up. Titans Kyle says, Cooper DeGene stock up. The Iowa corner. We talked about him on the podcast today with Greg Cosell. Oh, by the way, uh, make sure you get your Greg Cosell tickets. Uh, Bert will drop the Eventbrite link for the draft and free agency. Basically, the Titans offseason show that we're, it's a huge offseason for the Titans. And Greg and I are looking forward to breaking it down. We did a little bit of that today, as a matter of fact. We spent a lot of time talking about Josh Allen, his impact on the Jags defense, uh, and specifically focused on corners with our draft analysis today. But if you want to be in the house on Friday, May the 3rd, when Greg and I go through tape on Legereus Sneed, Calvin Ridley, Lloyd Cushenberry, Tony Pollard, all the different Titans draft picks that they'll make, and look through what Will Levis and Tajay Spears in particular can see can stand to improve upon, you're going to want to be at the Analog in the Hutton Hotel on Friday, May the 3rd, the tickets are available for just $25 at 1045thezone.com. B French wants to know who the special guest is. Um, so let's see. Not this Friday, but next Friday, I'll tell you who the special guest is. That's two weeks from the, I think that's two weeks from the date of the pod. Uh, so yeah, with, with two weeks to go, um, just to ensure that we're pitching a sellout for this thing, because we've already sold... Over a hundred, excuse me, over a hundred tickets. We don't have that many more to sell, as a matter of fact. So I've been waiting to announce the special guest uh, because we are, you know, wanting to give people the opportunity to buy the tickets before they all get bought up. Uh, when I announce this thing, not this Friday, not to, not two days from now, because I'm going to be in Miami. But when I get back from vacation and when we're doing the radio show on Friday, I'll tell you then who our special guest is going to be at the Analog on Friday, May the 3rd. Uh, it's a very, very big Titans person. We'll leave it at that. How about that for a tease? A week-long tease, a little more than a week-long tease for you guys to sit there and marinate on about who might join us at the off-season breakdown show with Greg Cosell live at the Hutton Hotel on Friday, May the 3rd. Uh, they're even at, putting out promos for it, as a matter of fact. You never know who might pop up on stage with Greg and I, for example, maybe even a little bit of Ron Slay. The one and only, the one and only, NFL Films, you know that last name, his carries his own weight. You walk in the room, Super Bowls, Radio Row, whatever it may be, breaking down film, breaks it down better than anyone you can think of. And we had a great luxury of being able to have him here. We pulled him out of Billy Joel last night. Like, get on out of here, Greg. You got to you gotta talk in the morning, you know what I'm saying? He tried to stay out all night on Broadway. We said, you can't do that, Greg. You got to get up here and talk. But this is Greg Cosell. Come on up, Greg. Y'all show him some love. All right, Slay. <laughs> All right. Now listen up. We it's only right. I could do this. I could host this event. <laughs> but well, then we'd have a lot of dumb questions. <laughs> yeah, there you go. See what I'm saying? I told y'all. <laughs> I got it warmed up for you. Ready? <laughs> So if you want to be in the house for Cosell, for maybe, I know Slay's going to be there. I know Blaine Bishop, the hitman, is going to be in the house. I know a lot of our friends, uh, a lot of our friends that have uh, big roles on the radio show are going to be there. And like I said, a very special Titans guest that we'll announce next Friday. Get your tickets in the Eventbrite link that Bert just dropped in the chat for you. Stock up, stock down, rising and falling. Whose stock rose? Whose stock fell? This week in sports, um, it's entirely which defensive player stands to benefit most from the coaching change. Uh, Poipol Noipol. 
<laughs> Bert, I know you're laughing as hard at that as I am. <laughs> I hate how quickly he pulled that. I didn't know he had the ability to do that in the midst of the live show. I don't like that witchcraft. I don't like the ability to check the tape on me in real time. It's been, again, almost six years of nobody holding me accountable for anything that I say around here. I don't want that having to live in the background, to live in the back of my head while I'm doing the show. So, yeah, stock down me, stock up, poiple, noiple. Neu shameful. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. <laughs> stock up Traylon Burks. I think he's going to have a legit opportunity this coming training camp. Um his stock can't go down any further than I think it already is. I mean, I guess it could, but it seems like it's infinitely more likely to go up in this new offense. We'll see Nick Holt speaking about Traylon Burks, the former number one uh, draft choice earlier today. You know, Traylon's potential is, you know, very high. First round pick, obviously you can see all the talent, but he's going to get what he earns. You know what I mean? And, uh, He's, you know, Mike two days with him. He's been a great guy. He seems like he's learning a lot. He's really taking in process and all the information. And then when he gets on the field, it's what he can translate. But he's got a skill set that, you know, he's a big guy. He's going to run and he can make contested catches. And so if he can find a way to do that for us, that'd be a pretty big uh, addition. So that's Nick Holtz, the Titans OC, talking about Traylon Burks. Uh, Karen O'Keefe and... Uh, let's see who else Bryce Erickson, both with the same stock down, both with the same falling candidate, Rishi Rice, the chiefs wide receiver facing eight felonies, uh, and now a warrant out for his arrest. It's a really, really difficult situation. Uh, stock up me, Angelica James says, but going to be in South beach with them. Hoochie daddy shorts on That's Damn right. Five inch inseams. That's how we roll Angelica. Uh, I already checked the weather for Miami. I'm going to be staying in Brickell at the JW Marriott. I'm so excited. We're going to have a little beach. We're going to have a little sun. The weather's in, I think, 85 the whole time that we're down there. Uh, and also, my one of my college roommates is from Miami, uh, a very uh, undistinguished gentleman uh, of Cuban descent. Raul de la Area is getting married, uh, and which is the primary reason for my trip. I have uh, My college roommates keep getting married and living in cool spots like Los Angeles and Miami. So... Um, I guess they're good for something, but we're going to turn it into a little bit of an extended vacation as well. Get some beach time, get some sun before we get back to the grind of the draft and everything that lies ahead. Cause these next three weeks, kids, less than three weeks, these next two weeks are going to fly right by. And then we'll have a whole different football team to talk about heading into 2024, which I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a whole different football team to talk about because the one that I've been covering for the last two seasons has been straight cheeks. That's going to do it for us tonight. That's going to do it for us this week. I'm on the radio show tomorrow. Former uh, Titan center Ben Jones is in studio. We're talking offensive line prospects. He's been working with a lot of them. And we'll talk about Lloyd Cushenberry, his impact on the offense, because Ben and Lloyd share the same agent, which is very, very useful to know, so they know each other well. We'll get some good insight and analysis from Ben. We'll have Kyle Tucker of The Athletic, who covers Kentucky, very interesting time to be covering Kentucky basketball right now. Um, I think that they may turn into the next Indiana, which is a formerly great program that's uh, heading towards a shell of itself, which would make me very happy. I'm sorry, Kentucky fans. Uh, but I hope that's true. We'll talk to Kyle Tucker about that at 1020 as well. Should be a fun radio show before I leave on Friday for South Beach. Uh, the next time we do primetime, no 615 sessions this week uh, because obviously I'll be on the beach on Friday. I guess I could zoom in from the beach, but I'm not going to. And the next time we do the primetime show will be Tuesday night. Tuesday night is the next time that you and I will get together on this particular program, on this particular broadcast. So we will see you then. Have a great time off in between and enjoy the morning show. They'll take care of you from here. See you guys. This is our Colts. This is our team. We bleed blue. This is our Colts, whether win or lose, we love them. For the shoe, beat the Titans, let the world hear us now. This is our team, go Colts!